The origin of this magical world is from a novel I wrote. It all started when I received an email from a reader wanting to adapt my novel, long after I had stopped updating it. When I agreed, I unexpectedly found myself in the world of my novel, with a face marked by a question mark. After two weeks, I started getting used to it. It was only after these two weeks that I confirmed I was not dreaming, but had reincarnated as a minor character in my own novel. After much thought, I guessed that the way back would be to follow the main storyline. Once it reached where I stopped updating, the novel would end, and I might have a chance to return. However, given the length of the story, it would take about 10 years. As this world is filled with various dangers, I decided to attend the school where this body belonged. This school is the Cube Academy that trains heroes in the main setting of my novel. Among the many students with special talents, only a handful of elites can become students of the Cube. Since the original owner of this body was able to join, he must have had some special qualities. Although I don't know the talents of a minor character, I hope to be of some help. My class at the Cube is the core location in the novel, where the main characters, both heroes and villains are in the truth class. I will have various encounters with these geniuses in this class. Thinking about spending 10 years with them makes me feel somewhat uncertain about the future. When evening classes ended, I returned to the dormitory. There was a package at my door. I thought it belonged to the original owner of the body, Kim Chun Dong, but to my surprise, when I opened it, it was my laptop. Its appearance shocked me. The laptop then automatically turned on and prominently displayed synchronization beginning. Accompanied by a dazzling bright light, everything about the character Kim Chun Dong began to synchronize to Kim Hajin, which is me. These were all settings I had created when writing the novel. I was curious about who could have sent the laptop to me. After synchronization was complete, the laptop suddenly turned off. I had acquired exclusive powers. I was no longer Kim Chun Dong, but had returned to my original form. However, due to the synchronization, all my attributes were reset. I slowly placed the laptop on the desk and could clearly see my own face on the screen. I could see multiple windows, and I think this is what I defined as enlightenment in my settings. It's an awakening phenomenon that appears when one surpasses their own limits. In this world, people call it enlightenment. After enlightenment, one can understand their own data and talents in a numerical way. Strength, 1.2. Endurance, 1.3. Simply put, you can see your own status window. After resetting my abilities, my values are clearly lower than Kim Chun Dong's. The status bar has many options. Novice consideration, a talent can be written for 10,000 SP, but the most conspicuous among them is the settings intervention power. I do not remember writing about this ability, and I can gain corresponding SP points by increasing increasing my presence in the world. A thousand SP points can be exchanged for one ability point. It is undoubtedly asking me to intervene in the main storyline of this world. Just when I thought it was absurd, a status window suddenly appeared, but it was all question marks and could only be unlocked after the main storyline ends. Fortunately, I was already prepared to get involved in this world. If I could get connected with the main characters, maybe I could find a way to leave. Given this, I also need to enhance my strength to smoothly complete the storyline. I then used my points to enhance my abilities. In the novel I wrote, there is no concept of leveling up. Heroes become stronger by obtaining ability points. My recent allocation was used entirely to increase luck. Luck in my novel is an overpowered ability, but as it is a fixed ability, it was set to be unenhanceable with points. However, if I convert my points to SP points, I can do so. So I quickly prepared to try it out and converted the 10 points I had just gained. I used 9,000 SP points to raise luck to 9. Then I unexpectedly triggered a mysterious luck, which was a pleasant surprise because my luck value has now reached 9.1. The main character Kim Suho has a magic ability value of around 9.0, so this is a spectacular result. I plan to use the remaining SP to enhance my perseverance, as I still need to endure the extreme training at the cube. With the help of my extremely high luck, my perseverance reached an unexpected 7.2. Just when I thought I could continue to exploit this, the system detected a serious error, so from now on, I cannot use SP to modify fixed ability values. Although somewhat disappointed, I took the opportunity to increase my luck and perseverance. I still have 10,000 care SP points given by the system, but I will wait until I have thought it through before spending these points. The next day after morning training, our class's instructor for the coming year took the stage to speak. His name is Kim Suhyuk, and according to the classifications of various associations, he is an upper middle class hero. After introducing himself, he moved on to today's main topic, and our first task today was to select our main weapons. Soon, under the instructor's guidance, we entered the large equipment warehouse of the Cube Academy. There were many ancient weapons there, and while all the students were attracted by the dazzling array of equipment, the instructor hurried everyone to choose their weapons. Once a main weapon is chosen, it must be used for at least six months before it can be changed. The students chose their favorite weapons based on their individual situations, and the equipment warehouse had all kinds of weapons available. Watching the main characters smoothly select their weapons, I then began looking for a weapon suitable for myself. With my current attributes, I simply couldn't use the weapons other students could. Moreover, I am not familiar with those swords and knives, so my selection criteria were clear, one that I could 
could quickly get the hang of, and another that I had come across in my original world. Glancing around, I soon determined my target, but my choice caught the attention of my classmates. Hearing the murmurs, the instructor just looked forward, surprised by the weapon I chose, because I had picked up a small handgun. Many even couldn't help but laugh. The instructor was also puzzled, curious about why I used a sword at my previous military school. To this, I calmly stated that I wanted to switch to a different weapon. Hearing this, the instructor said no more. The cube supports the autonomy of its students and all their choices, but regardless of the outcome, we must take responsibility for ourselves. Some already suspected that I wanted to draw attention, and others were preparing to teach me a lesson during the simulated duels, to show me the difference between weapons. To this, I was also helpless. After all, it was my own setting, and although in this world, guns are also excellent weapons, this is only for ordinary people who cannot manipulate magic. In the novel setting, guns use magic bullets, which are stronger than metal bullets, but even so, guns are not popular among heroes. The first reason is the limit. No matter how strong the users are, the destructive power of a gun does not change. Secondly, this world has materialized myths and legends, and weapons from those myths truly exist. Therefore, the older the history, and the stronger the origin, the higher the weapons level. That's why heroes favor these ancient weapons, as they can use them to break through their limits and enhance their strength. However, all this has nothing to do with me, since I am not the protagonist of a manga, nor have I really used weapons like swords. How could I possibly compete with these the cube students? For me, a gun is the best choice. Now that I have chosen a weapon, it's time to acquire a talent. Talent is also called a special ability, which is the foundation of a hero's strength. Typically, a person only has one talent, but there are a few exceptions. Kim Suho, besides his displayed sword saint talent, he has other talents that have not yet been revealed. Elsewhere, after leaving the equipment room, Kim Suho went to the training room. He called the girl ahead, Chai Nayun. Seeing the bow and arrow in her hands, Kim Suho then remembered that the truth class had just gained another sharpshooter. However, his words made Chai Nayun quite upset, as she doesn't consider me as a true sharpshooter and even suspects that I have given up on becoming a hero. After returning to the dorm, I began to organize my thoughts. I then planned to think of a talent suitable for myself, and when I set the first talent, I would also be given an additional 10,000 SP points, so I casually typed the talent on the computer, Master Sharpshooter. Immediately after, I used SP points to finalize its setting. Unexpectedly, after consuming the points, the status bar was automatically modified based on what I had written. The description of Master Sharpshooter is capable of proficiently using all types of ranged weapons, not only can see far distances but also can use the ability Thousand Mile Eye. This effect is quite good. In the future, besides guns, I could also use bows and arrows, and from the introduction of Master Sharpshooter, it appears to be an evolving talent. After some thought, I decided to choose Master Sharpshooter. It would now depend on this talent to carry me through to the end of the story. Time quickly moved to the next day. Today the teacher was lecturing on strategies for towers and dungeons, but possessing the talents of observation and browsing, I didn't need to pay close attention to grasp the content of the theory class easily. The observation and browsing allows me to observe people within my field of view, even see the contents of their smartwatches, and also enables me to read information on a computer at any time without a medium. After class, the teacher reminded everyone not to forget to review, as there would soon be a written exam. Once the teacher left, Chai Nian couldn't help but complain about why we had to learn all this theoretical knowledge. Shouldn't we be showing our skills in real combat? It seems her words became reality. The next second, the doors of the truth class were pushed open, and it turned out to be the instructor notifying everyone to gather in the square in 20 minutes. Upon hearing this news, Chai Nian was ecstatic. Just as she hoped, the instructor was sending everyone to participate in practical training. Arriving at the training ground, the instructor didn't elaborate much and immediately started forming groups. Each team consisted of four members, and for fairness, students with lower rankings were paired with those with higher rankings. Moreover, these groups would remain until the midterm exams. After explaining the basics, the instructor displayed the groups on a big screen. I didn't care about the protagonist's team, but to my surprise, I was grouped with Yuyona. Just like all classic tropes in novels, the protagonist always has a group that collides with him and then drives the plot forward. In the original setting of my novel, Yuyona was one of the main characters. She is the heir to the strongest guild in the country, essence of straight, and also a descendant of the prestigious family. In the early part of the novel, she stands on the opposite side of the protagonist, Kim Suho, but eventually, they become comrades with shared ideals. Although I don't know why she is in my team, considering my situation, it's crucial to get involved with Yuyona. The more significant my role in the plot, the more SP points I earn. I secretly resolve to find a way to attract Yuyona's attention. At that moment, Yuyona, who was resting, heard someone calling her. Turning around, it turned out to be fellow team members Jane Hozung and Azuki. Although the two were very pleased, Yuyona didn't notice they were teammates at that moment. Once she confirmed it, she immediately changed her attitude and became very polite. However, they seemed to only have three people. Hearing Yuyona wondering who the other teammate was, I took the initiative to step forward. She had no impression of me, but I couldn't act timidly 
quickly because I knew Yona despised weak people. I hadn't even introduced myself when Jean Hosung next to me immediately recognized me as the person who chose the handgun in the equipment room. He mentioned that my reputation among the first years had already spread. However, seeing that we were still chatting, the instructor immediately appeared and interrupted. After sending the coordinates of the monsters each team needed to kill to their smart watches, today's practical training officially began. Yuyona and her team, after long-term training, had very high ability values, and their progress was swift. But I was different. When we were almost at the destination, I felt like I was about to die. Although my physical attribute was definitely higher than that of ordinary people, compared to the cube students, I could only be the tail of the team. After reaching a seaside, we arrived at the training area's 8th beach. The monster in this area was the Black Hump Octopus, whose ferocity was unquestionable. When I also arrived, Yuyona organized a battle plan. The Black Hump Octopus is a lower mid-level monster. However, its own attack power is not strong. The key is the tumor on its head that can shoot out 10 small octopuses. These small octopuses have a terrifying blood-sucking ability, which is also their most lethal part. Hazuki and Jean Hosung thought that to quickly handle the 10 octopuses, assigning this task to me as an archer was best. However, Yona disagreed. She insisted on dealing with the small octopuses herself, while Jean Hosung and Hazuki preserved their strength. The Black Hump Octopus has a strong self-healing ability, and they needed to strike its fatal part in one blow. Yona's plan was clearly to keep me out of the training. Following orders, Jean Hosung decisively knocked on a large rock, initially to lure the monster to the shore. This plan was successful. Seeing the humans on the shore, the Black Hump Octopus swiftly swam over. Yuyona was ready to strike. The Black Hump Octopus, coming close, did not hide at all and immediately released the blood-sucking octopuses from its head. These little monsters were incredibly fast. Even when Jean Hosung saw the attack, he could not dodge. Fortunately, Yuyona acted in time as planned, her whip successfully killing each octopus, and Yuyona made it look easy, using hardly any effort. Seeing this, Jean Hosung was thoroughly convinced of why Yuyona was ranked 7th among the cube's freshmen. After thanking Yuyona, he quickly withdrew from the battlefield, leaving Yuyona to handle the direct confrontation temporarily. Just as she dodged an attack from the Black Hump Octopus's tentacles, I saw an opportunity to act. A wriggling small octopus appeared behind Yuyona. Even if Azuki spotted it in time, the distance was just too close. At that moment, Yuyona couldn't dodge in time. To Yuyona's surprise, accompanied by the sound of a gunshot, the crisis was instantly averted. The shooter was none other than me, standing not far away. With the enhancement of Master Sharpshooter, my handgun could almost be said to never miss. The astonished Yuyona couldn't believe that Kim Hajin, whom she had looked down upon, had saved her at a critical moment. Azuki and Jean Hosung also couldn't believe how timely my intervention was. Yuyona was originally stubborn, saying, didn't I tell you not to act? But before she could finish, the Black Hump Octopus launched its next round of attacks. This time, the octopuses were different from the information because there were not only ten anymore, but dozens that even Yuyona couldn't handle. I wasn't panicked by this. Despite the large number of monsters, they weren't smart, and their movement patterns were easy to capture. This moment was the best time to show my skills, as my master sharpshooter had a special skill, bullet time. It could slow the flow of time for three seconds. The only thing I had to do next was to quickly shoot through each blood-sucking octopus. Three seconds is not long. In the eyes of Yuyona and the others, it was almost just a few breaths. But when they looked back, they suddenly found that the numerous octopuses had all been shot into a sieve. Despite everything being so shocking, Yuyona quickly realized the situation on the battlefield. Without the small octopuses, the Black Hump Octopus's weakness was no longer shielded. In just an instant, her whip flew out and tightly wrapped around the Black Hump Octopus's vulnerability. Simultaneously, Yuyona swiftly urged her teammates to attack. Azuki and Jean Hosung didn't hesitate for a second and leaped onto the monster's head. The next moment, both unleashed their magic power, and under their powerful combined attack, the Black Hump Octopus was unsurprisingly killed on the spot. The real combat mission of Truth Class Team 5 was thus completed. Seeing that everything was finally resolved, I no longer continued to exert myself and lay down. Using bullet time for the first time had nearly exhausted all my energy. Hearing the announcement that Team 5's total time was 58 minutes and 58 seconds, Yona appeared very disappointed because this result only ranked 16th. It wasn't until returning to the classroom and confirming the times of all teams from the big screen that Yona realized she hadn't misheard. Although the academy would calculate individual scores separately, as drones filmed the entire course, what made her unhappy was losing to Chai Nayun once again. Nayun's team ranked 4th. When Yona arrived at the Cube Academy, she had resolved to outperform Chai Nayun from the start, but she lost during the first training session. What made it even harder for Yuyona to accept was that a boy nearby kept looking at Chai Nayun. Yuyona stormed over to Chai Nayun, but just as Nayun sensed someone approaching, Yuyona changed her demeanor and greeted Nayun very gently. Hearing that Yuyona came to inquire about the practical training, Nayun couldn't help feeling regretful, as her team only placed fourth. But when Nayun heard that Yuyona's team ranked 16th, she still 
praised them for being quite impressive, noting that achieving this result with a drag like a gunman was commendable, yet Yuyona was conflicted inside. As Nayan mentioned, they could have reached their destination in 10 minutes, but because of me, 50 minutes were wasted. However, in the subsequent battle, I played a significant role. Being able to kill dozens of blood-sucking octopuses with magic bullets, she became increasingly curious about who I really was. In the days following the practical training, I went to train my body, only now remembering to check the gains from the previous battle. Currently, my talent's proficiency has increased by 20%, triggered by luck. My perception has increased by 0.03, and both my vision and hearing have improved. My sensory abilities will be enhanced in the future. Meanwhile, by getting involved in Yuyona's storyline, I also gained several hundred SP points. During this time, by exercising, many of my abilities improved. After reviewing all the recent gains, I concluded today's training. In the evening, in the luxurious area of the student dormitories, Yuyona was staying up late looking at her computer. The content was my performance during training. She repeatedly watched it and finally arrived at a shocking figure. I had fired 60 magic bullets with my handgun in just 3 seconds. Yuyona wondered if a human could really pull the trigger 20 times in 1 second, or does my handgun have a burst fire button? After observing me all night, she found too many suspicious aspects about me. Despite such a standout performance in battle, and her familiarity with various talents, she had never heard my name before. At this moment, Shin Jong-hak, the boy who had been staring at Chai Nian during the day, sent her a message. Watching Shin Jong-hak ask what she was doing, Yona happily stated that she was reviewing the footage. To her surprise, he also expressed curiosity about the gunman and her team. Since the cube's practical training is fully recorded, essentially everyone in the academy and external major organizations can watch. Thanks to being in the same team as Yona, some people also watched our team's playback. But more people started paying attention to our team's performance. The focus was still on the protagonist, Kim Suho, including the deputy guild master of the creator's sacred grace, Yun Sun Ah. She was extremely fond of Kim Suho, impressed by his superb swordsmanship and extraordinary cutting force, realizing that the top guilds in the country would compete to recruit him, and she was no exception. Such a clean, sunny, and handsome talent was someone Yun Sun Ah wanted to recruit by any means necessary. But as she continued watching the footage of the practical training, she noticed a student using a gun. The assistant commented that because of Yuyona, many people had clicked on the video, and this gunman had also sparked a lot of discussions. With just a handgun, he had achieved unbelievable results. The assistant also told Yun Sun Ah that after entering the cube, I had changed my main weapon from swords to a handgun. Upon hearing this, Yun Sun Ah immediately understood that I must have successfully enlightened. There had been similar cases in the past, where after enlightenment, the individual replaced their originally proficient main weapon with a weapon that suits their talent. Enlightenment at 17 was surprisingly fast for her. Unfortunately, if the main weapon was a firearm, she thought it was not as appealing. After all, as time goes on, the disadvantages of modern weapons would become increasingly apparent. Time quickly passed, and three days later, the academy introduced a new training module. This time it was a simulated duel, typically conducted in pairs with training-specific weapons that do not cause significant injury. However, in the first year at the cube, one person was an exception. Then the instructor loudly called me to get up, but by now, I had already been thoroughly defeated 18 times. Unlike others, my opponent was one of the academy's instructors. The reason was that the training firearms were still being made, and using real guns could easily injure first-year students. Therefore, my simulated duel involved the instructor as my opponent. Although I had the thousand-mile eye effect of the master sharpshooter, which allowed me to see the instructor's attack trajectory clearly, it still depended on whether I could keep up with the speed. After the training, I was completely exhausted. Just as I was about to drink a coke and rest, I saw Yuyona. Given our previous experiences, our first impressions of each other were not good. Although she was a character I created, her temper was indeed terrible. But suddenly, I remembered the settings I had written for Yuyona, so I decided to test whether they were accurate. I called out to Yuyona, and then threw a can of coke her way, caught off guard. She didn't understand my intention, but she instinctively caught the coke. Realizing what was happening, Yuyona wondered if this was a provocation. To this, I said that the last training had benefited from her, and this was a gesture of goodwill. Of course, I had another purpose, which was to test how many SP points I could gain from conversing with members of the protagonist group. After hearing my words, Yuyona gently touched her hair and then threw the coke back to me, telling me not to act like we were familiar. This was her first warning to me. Immediately after, Yuyona turned and walked away. However, as she was walking, she suddenly noticed something was off. Yuyona felt that her handbag seemed heavier, so she stopped and opened it. Inside was another can of coke, which I had just slipped in. Angered, she initially wanted to throw it into a trash can, but looking around and seeing no one, she decided that the coke was innocent and put it back in her bag. Of course, I saw all of this. This is also a part of the character setting I created for her. Yuyona likes to eat coke, burgers, and similar foods, but due to her pride, she never shows this in front of others. I didn't expect that using a lesser-known setting about
about Yuyona and a few conversations with her would only earn me 4 SP points. It seems that I still need to get involved in the main plot to make a significant impact. The next part of the story is the attack on the National Weapon Museum by a Jin. A Jin refers to a human who has made a pact with a devil, exchanging their soul for great power. This incident was also triggered by an assassination attempt by the Jin. Coincidentally, the protagonist group was visiting the museum and ended up dealing with the Jin, which also sparked the group's interest in Kim Suho. However, only Kim Suho and Chai Nian will act this time, as the early Jins are relatively weak. This is good news for me as I feel fully able to participate in this part of the story. First, I need to find an opportunity to have them take me to the museum as well. At this moment, the instructor told me to quickly go back to the dormitory. Hearing this, I hurriedly packed up my computer and left. What I didn't notice was that at that moment, an email suddenly arrived on my computer. Soon, the opportunity one was looking for arrived. It was an activity organized by one of the clubs at the cube. These clubs, run by the students, involve a variety of activities including academic and martial arts directions. According to the setting, there are over a hundred clubs within the cube. Participating in club activities is not only a process of self-development but also an opportunity for students to interact with each other. The club I am joining today is named the Travel Club. The reason for this, of course, is that members of the protagonist group have also joined this club. Seeing many top first-year students gathered, the senior member who is the head of the club is somewhat trembling, but after regaining his composure, he introduces them to Kim Suho and others. The purpose of the travel club is relaxation, so they use portals to leave the cube for trips about twice a month. To welcome the new members, today's travel destination is chosen to be nearby and is the extremely bustling S city close to the cube. From this part of the story, it appears to be no different from what I originally wrote. Once the plot unfolds, I will have more opportunities to get involved. I thought I could easily earn SP points by getting involved a bit, but the senior member said we would be splitting into groups for a draw, which surprised me. Did I remember the plot wrong? What surprised me even more was that once again I was put in the same group as Yuyona. She didn't hesitate to tell me that it would be enough for her and me to act alone. Naturally, I agreed, as I had intended to act alone when I came. Soon, we arrived at the S City Weapons Museum. There were even more types of weapons here than in the cube, and the place was bustling with visitors. Chai Nian even took a liking to a bow and arrow there. Since she was here, it meant that Kim Suho was nearby. Seeing the approach, Kim Suho then noticed me. I introduced myself as Kim Hajin and started chatting with him. Hearing my name, he then remembered I was the one who had chosen the handgun. There had been too many people before, and Kim Suho hadn't noticed that I had also joined the travel club. He mentioned that there was a firearms exhibition hall nearby and asked if I wanted to check it out together. But before I could respond, a huge tremor came from the museum, followed by an emergency broadcast. Monsters had appeared around the museum perimeter. The repeated announcements gradually instilled fear in the people inside. When heart-wrenching screams came from outside, everyone started to panic and rush to escape. During the chaos, a little girl was accidentally knocked down. But just then, someone smashed the glass protecting an exhibit. The piercing noise momentarily quieted everyone, and they were all shocked by Chai Nian's action. Kim Suho, who had just saved the little girl, also didn't expect her to suddenly act. Finally, Chai Nian spoke up. She told everyone to calm down, saying the resident heroes would surely arrive soon. If they ran out now, they would only end up as food for the monsters. After speaking, Chai Nian took the weapon from the display case. At that moment, the museum's security system activated instantly, and the exit doors closed. Chai Nian reminded Kim Suho to also grab a weapon. They would have to protect the people until the heroes arrived. Suddenly, a series of crisp footsteps approached. Chai Nian immediately sensed this unusual presence, the power emanating from the newcomer quickly putting her into battle mode. This was the invading Jin, the villain I had designed to propel the protagonist's growth. As soon as the Jin saw Chai Nian, he attacked her, while Kim Suho had already taken the sword he had seen earlier. According to the original plot, Kim Suho's strength should easily handle him. The next moment, the two collided, but the outcome was beyond my imagination. Kim Suho was sent flying by the Jin. Looking at the injured Kim Suho lying beside me, I was momentarily stunned, as the plot was not supposed to develop like this. I clearly didn't write this kind of plot. In the novel, although Kim Suho initially hides his strength and seems to be at a disadvantage, once he releases his restraints, he crushes the Jin. But now, Kim Suho, who was hiding his strength, was directly injured by the Jin with one strike. Hearing my and Chai Nian's inquiry, Kim Suho shakily said he was fine, but his condition was not good. I had to find a way to buy him time, and Chai Nian had already positioned herself in front of Kim Suho. To her arrows, the Jin didn't even bother to defend. After firing more than 10 arrows, Chai Nian realized that, although her attacks hit, the Jin seemed not to feel any pain. This was not a special ability, nor was it a regenerative effect. Chai Nian understood that the Jin was enduring the damage through willpower alone. Seeing this, I quickly warned Chai Nian to get away, but the Jin's claws were about to pierce her. At the critical moment, Kim Suho intervened in time to block the Jin. However, his weakened strength couldn't hold against the Jin's transformed state for even a moment. The next second, 
Jin. He was smashed into the ground by the powerful Jin. Chai Nian shot again. This time her magic-infused arrows had an effect, but her attack also angered the Jin. The Jin abandoned its attempt to kill Kim Suo and turned to try to kill Chai Nian instead. The Jin's claws were too fast. Chai Nian couldn't dodge. Chai Nian couldn't avoid in time and was pinned against the wall. Knowing that continuing this way would definitely result in death, I quickly told everyone else to scatter. Facing the Jin's sudden increase in strength, I forced myself to remain calm despite the fear. Next, I had to do something to give Kim Suho and the others a chance to breathe. Ordinary magic bullets surely wouldn't cause damage, but since the opponent was still a character from my novel, I assumed the major aspects of the character settings were the same. That is to say, this Jin must be of a dark attribute. Immediately, I began to use my ability to change the attribute of the magic bullets. Changing their attribute required spending over a thousand SP points. After setting it up and using the points to save, my magic bullets changed attributes. The reason I wrote the attribute counter setting was also to allow the heroes to exert greater power. Quickly loading my handgun, I aimed it at the Jin. The next second, I loudly told Kim Suho to get out of the way. The modified magic bullet turned into a light bullet, which is the light attribute that counters the dark. Bullets of the essence of light can cause tremendous damage to the body. As soon as Kim Suho dodged, I immediately pulled the trigger. At close range, the shot hit the Jin's arm instantly. From the light bullet, dazzling white light emitted, and the Jin's arm was purified into ashes. The intense pain made him howl uncontrollably. Chai Nayun, who was controlled by the Jin's claws, was thus saved, and I successfully bought some time for Kim Suho. After activating his Sword Saint mode, Kim Suho's demeanor was completely different from before. His magic turned into flames that blazed fiercely on his weapon, and the Jin suddenly realized that it was probably going to die. The Sword Saint's magic could cut through anything in the world, and this time, the battle truly ended. Kim Suho's all-out strike split the Jin in half instantly. Along with the Jin's death, the first segment of the main plotline was also completed. Kim Suho stood up shakily, as using that sword now was his limit once a day. Meanwhile, a clear-headed Chai Nian couldn't stop retching. The close brush with death had left Chai Nian in agony. Kim Suho, trying to comfort her, was harshly pushed away by the panicked Chai Nian. Seeing this, Kim Suho did not attempt to approach further. He knew Nian needed time, but I nonchalantly said, don't worry, her appa will come soon to console her. After all, that's how I wrote it in the novel. However, as soon as I spoke, I felt the air suddenly become tense. Both Chai Nian and Kim Suho looked at me with extremely horrified and puzzled gazes. Chai Nian trembled even more and then couldn't hold back any longer and vomited. Soon, the monsters outside were almost completely eradicated and many heroes from S-City had arrived, including Yin Sung Ah. At this time, a member of her guild came to inform her that a Jin had appeared in the museum but was fortunately dealt with by three students from the cube. Yun Sung Ah was quite impressed by this news and then asked which students were involved. Hearing that Kim Suho had participated and personally killed the Jin, Yun Sung Ah quickly rushed to the museum. She was excited inside, not expecting to encounter Kim Suho here and didn't want to miss this chance to build a closer relationship. Just then, I also came out from inside. Recognizing me in the cube uniform, Yun Sung Ah came up to greet me. She was about to ask where Kim Suho was when I preempted her by telling her that Kim Suho was inside. But soon after entering, Yun Sung Ah sensed something was off. How could I have known her purpose? Unfortunately, when she turned back to look, I was already gone. Yun Sung Ah talking to me really startled me. Could this also be related to changes in the novel's plot? After resting for a while, I began to think about the reasons for the changes in the novel. Although this world has an additional character named Kim Ha Jin, my part should be minimal. But soon, I realized a point that had been overlooked, which is that this novel now, including myself, should have two authors. So today's events might be the doing of the co-author. It seems I have entered a world where someone else's adaptation of the novel is taking place. If that's the case, the situation is completely different now, which means all the predictions I made based on my own novel are futile. Just as I was panicking about the unknown, my computer suddenly rang with a new message. It was a comment from the co-author, who was a former reader of mine. He thought that every time the protagonist and his companions faced no real threats, it made the story too boring, so he took the liberty of rewriting it during this period. The first plan was to strengthen the villains. By evening, the incident was wrapped up. The instructor then called me and Kim Suho, having already been briefed on the situation, and told us to head back to school to rest. Kim Suho also asked about Chai Nian's condition, and the instructor said she had taken medical leave and her family had taken her to the hospital. Seeing that we were okay, the instructor then left. At that moment, Kim Suho suddenly called my name, wanting to know why I had said those words to Nayun. Seeing my confusion, Kim Suho asked why I had mentioned her appa. Now I finally understood the reason for their odd behavior then. Could there be something wrong with Chai Nian's appa? My expression made Kim Suho suspect whether I was feigning ignorance, but his head was hurting too much, and he said no more. However, I was very concerned about this matter. Quickly after returning to the dormitory, I began to look up Chai Nian's family situation. Her father is Chai Shin Hyuk, and her brother is Chai Jin Hyun. After reading a lot of information, I found that their situation was exactly as I had set it up. But why 
why would they react that way? Just then, a news article caught my eye, boldly stating, Chai Jinian successfully rescues comrades in the Operation Fires Park, falling into a coma as a result. The content of the report was unexpected. In the original plot, Chai Jinian gained high honor from this battle, and at 13, Chai Nayun, watching her appa hailed as a hero, felt incredibly proud. This was the setting I had written. Another new message came in, a notice reminding me that the modified settings would only be provided in message form after I noticed them myself. Chai Jinian, the late stage powerful ally of Kim Suho in the novel, no longer existed, considering the protagonist had too many helpers. The setting was changed. For years ago, after becoming a hero, Chai Jinian was marked by a demon's brand, tragically turning into a demon seed, but no one is currently aware of his condition. Meanwhile, Chai Nian was sitting silently on her bed, feeling very downhearted. Just then, a man pushed open the door of the hospital room. It was Nian's father, Chai Shinhyuk. He was too worried about his daughter's condition and had hurriedly come to S City to visit her. After telling her father she was okay, Chai Nian said she wanted to see her appa before being discharged. Hearing this, Chai Shinhyuk was somewhat surprised. He then agreed to go with her. However, back in the dormitory, I was now in considerable pain. A demon is a higher entity than a jinn, and they can brand humans to turn them into demon seeds. Once the seed passes its latent period and germinates, the human becomes a powerful demon. I had set the latent period of the jinn seed to five to six years, meaning Chai Jinian's latent period was already half over. In such a short time, if he successfully turns into a jinn, it would inevitably cause widespread disaster. The only solution to the current situation is to kill Chai Jinian before the jinn awakens, but this is extremely difficult. First, his security system is definitely top-notch, and no mercenary would take on the task of assassinating a wealthy young master. Second, the germination of the seed shows no signs, so I have no evidence to report him. Once the latent period passes, Kim Suo's strength will definitely not be enough to fight the fully blossomed demon. Even sending current powerful heroes would inevitably result in many casualties. I can't just watch this happen, because they still have to contribute in the later part of the novel. So, the only one who can kill Chai Jinian is me. On the other hand, Chai Nian's visiting time has ended, and now someone is telling her it's time to leave. After saying goodbye to her appa, Chai Nian closed the room door, but she can't forget what happened before. That guy named Kim Hajin. On the night I and Kim Suho killed the Jin, Yun Sung Ah, after reviewing the situation at the museum and meeting with Kim Suho, actually came to the hero's tower. This place holds the records of all the nation's talents. Her guild members were worried about being discovered, as this is an act punishable by law. Yun Sung Ah didn't care. She said she was just checking the records of today's attack. Yun Sung Ah came because she found light attribute mana on the corpse of the Jin at the scene. The existence of such a person would inevitably be the nemesis of the Jin's, so she must find this person and recruit them into her guild. Soon, after watching the video, Yun Sung Ah confirmed that the person she was looking for was one of the three The Cube students who killed the Jin, but she was already keeping an eye on Kim Suho and Chai Nayun, and the remaining person, Yun Sung Ah, was hearing about for the first time. However, the name Kim Ha Jin seemed familiar to her. Days later, I was still participating in school activities as usual, and I recently realized something new, that other people can't see my laptop. Thanks to this, I could confidently verify everyone's current settings without reservation. My computer also acquired a new function that can automatically detect real-time setting changes. For example, Damien, who was just crushed by Rachel, now has significantly reduced confidence. The specific function of this feature is that within a 30-meter radius centered on me, if there are settings that differ somewhat from the original novel, the computer will pop up an information window to alert me. Compared to the co-author information that comes after I sense something is amiss, the computer's function is undoubtedly more efficient. As I was thinking, Chai Nian came up behind me at some point, her face gloomy, wanting to spar with me. Of course, I understood the purpose of Chai Nian's visit and immediately refused her, but Chai Nian was relentless, saying that the previous insult to her appa couldn't just be overlooked. However, I still refused, saying that my handgun was loaded with live ammunition, and if someone got hurt, the instructor would scold us. My words only made Chai Nian even angrier. Fortunately, the instructor noticed the situation here in time, told me that I couldn't spar with other students for now, and immediately asked Chai Nian to return to her place. I also feel very sorry for what happened before. I had thought about apologizing, but once I knew about the Jin seed, killing Chai Jinian became my most pressing goal. For this reason, I have been desperately training to become stronger recently. So even if I manage to ease the relationship with Chai Nian, when that day comes, she will only hate me more. After training, there is a large welcoming party in the evening, organized by Yun Haiyan, the head of the academic club. Their club's goal is to analyze monsters and research tactics, and they organize a discussion activity every week. Looking at the elegant and handsome Yun Haiyan on stage, many younger female students couldn't help but blush, but his charming appearance and gentlemanly demeanor are all just the abilities of a demon. The Cube, as the main stage of the early part of the novel, has witnessed student disappearances, monster invasions, and various other incidents, and Yun Haiyan is the master 
mastermind behind these events. His ability, Charm, was obtained through a pact with the demon Lilith, which means Yun Hyun is actually a jinn. He is currently greedily eyeing a target. Similarly, I joined this academic club also for that person, Yu Yona. Today is the welcoming party, and Yun Hyun expressed that he wanted the new students to get an early understanding of their discussion activities. Then he introduced a mid to high level monster, the Mountain Tyrant, whether inside the magic school or external organizations. Information on high level monsters is extremely valuable, with the information on vital parts alone trading for at least several hundred million dollars. Yun Hyun suddenly asked where the Mountain Tyrant's weak point is, specifically asking Yuyona to answer. Although surprised, Yuyona answered, So far, no one has found the Mountain Tyrant's weak point, and that was the correct answer. Yun Hyun said that discussing these issues is one of the pleasures of the club. At the end, he said that students who want to exchange ideas should definitely stay for the follow-up activities. The welcoming party soon ended, and watching Yuyona stand up, I asked her if she was going to participate in the activity, but Yuyona acted as if she couldn't see me and turned her head to leave. So I spoke up again, Miss Yona, are you also going to participate in the after party? This time she finally responded to me. She said she would participate, maybe she would find some useful information. Hearing this, I roughly guessed Yuyona's purpose, then casually said, are you planning to pass the information to the raid team of the Essence of Straight? My words forced Yuyona to turn back. Essence of Straight is one of the major guilds established 50 years ago during the outcall. Founded around Yuyona's family, they have now become a large guild capable of influencing the country. However, the deputy guildmaster is currently gaining momentum, and even the legitimate air feels threatened. I continued to speculate, guessing that Yuyona's unusual participation in the activity was probably for this reason. She didn't understand what I meant by saying so much, so I clarified my intentions. I can tell you the weakness of the high rank monster, the mountain tyrant. This surprised Yuyona, even making her speech a bit stuttered. Without any hesitation, I told her, the mountain tyrant has a small blue emblem on its heel. Attacking there will immobilize it. However, this information isn't free. Once the task is successful, I want you to get me a desert eagle from the essential armory. After all, your guild owns that armory. Yuyona was curious about my basis for this, or if there was any corroborating data. To this, I calmly smiled and said no. Instantly, Yuyona fell silent, regretting why she even bothered with me, feeling it was a complete waste of time, but I still called out to her, insisting she must trust me. In the blink of an eye, Yuyona had left. If she would trust me just once, she would become my ally in the future. After leaving, Yuyona didn't go to the event. Instead, she went to a secluded place and contacted the guild secretary, instructing them to convey a message to the Mountain Tyrant strategy team. During this operation, pay close attention to the blue emblem on its heel. It might be a vital spot. After saying this, Yuyona felt completely insane. Days passed in a blink, and I was thinking of seeing if I could get some advance payment from the school. But when I opened the cube bank, I found myself deeply in debt. I owed the school $300,000, a number that made me break out in a cold sweat, as 300000 is the maximum loan limit for the cube students. I was curious what Kim Chundong had done to spend down to just 3000 from 300000 At this rate, not to mention returning to my original world, just repaying the debt would keep me here for a lifetime. It seems I have no choice but to make money while becoming stronger. Right now, I have two legitimate ways to make big money. One is investing in towers and dungeons. To this day, towers and dungeons continue to appear around the world, and guilds that discover and successfully conquer them can enjoy treatment equivalent to companies. Investing early in a guild shares, if they go public, will yield astronomical returns. Although I know which guilds will go public in the future, I don't have the capital to invest, so I'll have to leave this method for later. Thus, my only choice is the second route. Go to hunting grounds to hunt monsters for materials to sell. Unlike towers and dungeons, hunting grounds are known dangerous areas where selling monster carcasses can quickly earn money. But my current ability level has just surpassed that of an adult male, and even using SP for enhancement, my training handgun is not capable of dealing with those tough-skinned monsters. As I was pondering solutions, a new message popped up on my computer. The dormitory doorbell suddenly rang, and the delivery person outside said that Yuyona had sent me a package. This surprised me. Why would she send me something? I immediately went out to check. Outside was a suitcase, and after slowly opening it, the contents inside surprised me. Indeed, because of what Yuyona sent, the next day I went to the hunting grounds in G province. I didn't expect the staff at the hunting ground transfer point to be so polite after I reported my identity as a The Cube student. After coming out of the transfer portal, I was directly in the official G province hunting ground. The hunting grounds here are generally low in danger level, so they are popular all year round, with foreigners from all over the world coming to hunt. Walking down, the street was full of people looking to form teams or trading after their hunts. Seeing the scene in front of me, I remember that I needed to find an agent to maximize my profits when selling monster materials. I thought I might as well just find someone nearby. Just then, a man approached me proactively. When he heard that I was indeed looking for an agent, he quickly handed me his business card. I only glanced at it, but his name caught my attention, Park Suhiak of SH Entertainment. He would not only become
become the best agent in each country in the future. But most importantly, in the original story, he was Kim Suho's agent. Park Suhyuk honestly said, We just opened. I smiled and greeted him, not expecting to sign a contract with him the next second. This world is still in the early stages of the novel, and forming good relationships early with those who will be famous in the future is also a good investment. Having found an agent, I then went on the hunt, and to my surprise, Park Suhyuk chose to come along. Normally, agents without cars would choose to wait outside the hunting grounds. Along the way, he identified a hobgoblin from just a footprint, listing its characteristics and market price, but the hobgoblin's market value was not high. Then I pointed to the steel wild boar below us and asked Park Suhyuk about its price, which scared him with its sudden appearance. He then told me I probably couldn't handle it because normal firearms couldn't even penetrate its skin. Hearing this, I happily prepared to try. The weakness of the mountain tyrant I had provided to Yona, she had actually followed my information. Yesterday, I also received the new weapon, a desert eagle, that she sent, and I had also used SP points to add a certain setting. The next second, I fired at the steel wild boar without hesitation, and the shot easily pierced through the monster. Looking at the steel wild boar lying on the ground, Park Suhyuk's eyes were filled with disbelief, and the setting I had written was this. The destructive power amplification ability is multiplied each time the desert eagle kills the enemy in a single blow. I didn't expect the new weapon to perform so well, which pleased me greatly. My precise shooting instantly earned Park Suhyuk's admiration. I briefly responded to him, but the next second, I turned around and continued firing. Park Suhyuk didn't understand why I was doing this, but following the direction I was shooting, the black pelican above the distant cliff had already been shot down. Park Suhyuk wondered if I could really see that far. Confidently, I told Park Suhyuk that seeing from miles was now quite easy for me. Having killed two monsters, that was it for today. It took a lot of effort, but we finally gathered the two monsters together. I wondered how to transport them outside the hunting grounds, and Park Suhyuk didn't disappoint me. He had already thought everything through. He would pay for a rescue team to come and transport them and would give me the payment tomorrow. Hearing this, I confidently left the matter to Park Suhyuk and decided to only work with him in the future. When I first came here, I told Park Suhyuk it was my first hunt, and now he was curious about what I planned to do after receiving the payment. Unexpectedly, I seriously said I wanted to invest, which left Park Suhyuk astonished. He realized I didn't seem like a typical teenager. That evening, when I returned to the dormitory, the first thing I did was use the remaining money to buy all the shares that I could of a guild called the Pack Horse Master. This investment cost me the remaining $3,000 I had. According to my original setting, the founder of this guild was a djinn, playing a significant role in the novel. Of course, my focus was on whether they could go public in the future. In a while, the Pack Horse Master would conquer the Devil Nest in X City, after which they would successfully go public and their value would skyrocket. After searching around, I didn't find any other guilds to invest in, probably due to the lack of public information. It seems I'll have to search in the Violet Banquet of the Dark Web. Remembering the setting of the Dark Web, I couldn't help but recall a major antagonist team from later in the story, the mysterious organization called the Chameleon Troop. The identity of each member is a mystery, known only to me as the author. Although the Chameleon Troop are antagonists, they are very resistant to jinns, so if there's a chance to connect with them, they might become a powerful ally in eliminating Chai Jinian. According to the original storyline, there's still one spot open in the Chameleon Troop, and they should be starting to act soon. Just as I was about to continue checking the settings, my computer suddenly went dark, which made me very anxious. In my mind, the computer is now more important than anything else as it is crucial for my return. Fortunately, after some waiting, the computer finally lit up again, displaying some messages. A month has now passed, and the laptop's functions are currently updating. Meanwhile, Yuyona and Xin Zhonghak seem to be waiting for someone. They originally had a group called the Noble Society and were planning a gathering now. Seeing that Xin Zhonghak was annoyed by gatherings, Yuyona asked him to bear with it. Soon, the door of the restaurant was finally pushed open, and the person who arrived was Chai Nayun. Seeing her, Xin Zhonghak immediately brightened up, showing no sign of impatience. However, compared to his enthusiasm and concern about her hospitalization, Chai Nayun felt he was making too much of a fuss. Hearing the two continue to chat, Yuyona looked very gloomy beside them. They soon started their discussion for today, but during it, Chai Nayun suddenly brought me up. Seeing this, Yuyona was surprised. Why did she want to learn about this person? Immediately, Chai Nayun did not hold back and recounted the incident at the museum. She found it highly suspicious that I destroyed a Jin's arm with just a training handgun, which was completely different from my performance at school. At that moment, Chai Nayun remembered that Yuyona was in the same group as me, so she asked if Yuyona knew about my situation. Yuyona had investigated me, but she only knew about my background from the orphanage and the debt of 300,000. Comparing this with what Chai Nayun said, she realized I must have hidden my true strength, but Yuyona still said outwardly that there was nothing worth noting. Chai Nayun suddenly suggested that Kim Hajin might be a jin, which silenced the others. Then Yuyona dismissed her guess. Shin Zhonghak asked Chai Nayun if she disliked Kim Hajin, and after a moment of silence, Chai Nayun thought of what I had said and 
and then remarked, Indeed, that could be said. While they were discussing, my computer also completed its update. The next second, the light emitted by the computer made it hard for me to open my eyes. When the light faded, I suddenly felt a sharp pain on my arm, and by then, my left sleeve was already soaked with blood. A message then appeared on the computer, informing me that I had acquired a stigma, one of the creator's powers, accompanied by a flood of information into my mind. The mental strain and the severe pain in my arm were too much for me, and I collapsed to the ground. My computer displayed a new message about this update. It had added a sub-talent book of truth for me, and had enhanced my original observation and browsing abilities. The next day, when I attended the S-City recognition ceremony, my hand was still tingling. After fainting yesterday, I woke up in the morning. After receiving the notification, I came here. Although I had received the stigma, I was not clear about its specific effects yet. What surprised me was that I was merely thinking in my mind, yet suddenly Chai Nayan said I was disturbing her. This kind of troublemaking behavior left me speechless. I then calmly told Chai Nayan, you shouldn't forget that I saved your life a few days ago. Hearing this, she became even angrier and said that was a different matter. But our conversation was indeed disturbing to Kim Suho, so he pulled Chai Nayan away to switch places. After sitting next to me, Kim Suho thanked me, understanding that if it weren't for me that day, they definitely wouldn't have beaten the Jin. So he was very grateful. To this, I responded, even if I hadn't been there, you guys would have definitely won. Maybe you would have awakened even stronger powers. After all, Kim Suho is the main character in my novel. Facing those hardships and dangers, his strength always grows. After waiting for a while, the recognition ceremony finally began. The ceremony officially started, and the presenter of the awards was Yushi Yuk, ranked 37th among heroes. He is known as the Wolf of Valhalla, a high-ranking hero. When the host called the awardees to the stage, the three of us went up. Yushi Yuk presented the award to Kim Suho first, and with just one look, he understood why everyone in the industry was eyeing Kim Suho. However, while handing over the certificate, Yushi Yuk whispered in Kim Suho's ear, advising him that it might be better not to join an association and to remain a free hunter instead. The so-called hero's responsibility is everything, which Yushi Yuk found boring. But Kim Suho is not someone who is easily swayed. Even if it's as boring as others say, he still wants to be a real hero. Hearing this, Yushi Yuk sighed helplessly and said no more. When it was Chai Nian's turn, he noticed her. Chai Nian awkwardly called him master, but Yushi Yuk said that an archer is not his disciple. Although Chai Nian's father asked him to look after her, Yushi Yuk had no interest in Chai Nian becoming an archer. When it was my turn, Yushi Yuk was somewhat puzzled, as he hadn't even heard my name. Although being ignored made me feel uncomfortable. Fortunately, the Jin expulsion unexpectedly came with a reward of over 10,000, so I happily had an extra meal to celebrate. After the award ceremony, I received the prize money, totaling 15,000, which made me very satisfied. This money could be used to purchase more shares of the Pack Horse Master Guild, but for now, let's check the laptop's updated functions. First was the stigma, which likely was the wound that appeared on my wrist yesterday, possibly added by the other author. The explanation of the stigma was somewhat ambiguous, only knowing that magic could be manipulated at will by my mind. As I thought about it a bit, the stigma on my wrist suddenly appeared, but it was accompanied by pain. It wasn't convenient to check in the restaurant, so I decided to go back and confirm it later. The next update was that the laptop's network had been activated. I clicked through and saw that there were several sites I could access, which seemed to be the focus of this update. Among them, the importance of Violet Banquet, a highly reputable private website, was significant. It offers information, weapons, bounties, and contract trading. Almost every hero has used Violet Banquet during their development. Joining this site requires a high fee, but I only need 200 SP points to create an account. Just as I was trying to log in, Yun Sung Ah unexpectedly approached me. She said that after the award ceremony ended, she noticed I was missing and came looking for me to give me her business card. Receiving Yun Sung Ah's business card was very significant. It represented that Yun Sung Ah was officially trying to recruit me to her guild. After she sat down, she said she wanted to ask me a question. Although Yun Sung Ah presents herself as a friendly image to the public, I am well aware of her true nature. She is a strong woman who adheres to the principles of survival of the fittest. Even now, as she warmly recruits talent, if they later fail to meet her expectations, Yun Sung Ah would certainly discard them without hesitation. Establishing a relationship with her could be very beneficial for future development, but not right now. So when Yun Sung Ah just started asking how I defeated the Jin, I immediately refused her. Yun Sung Ah, who was rejected, introduced her identity again and then expressed her interest in me. Hearing this, I appeared somewhat indifferent and then thanked her for her attention. It's likely that Yun Sung Ah approached me because she saw me using light attributes, but currently, she is just interested, so I decided to play hard to get to increase her attention towards me. Thinking this, I stood up to say goodbye, and Yun Sung Ah, still not reacting, could only watch as I left. After returning to the dorm, I immediately started to investigate the specific effects of the stigma. The laptop indicated that the stigma's magic could change at my will and would not cause fatigue during use. The magic of the stigma can be manipulated freely, so, I imagine the stigma's magic taking the form of a short sword.
forward, and indeed, the next second, the stigma on my wrist began to glow, and a small short sword appeared in my hand. It seems, then, that the stigma's abilities are quite strong. The magic inside the stigma can be used in many flexible ways. I thought I would be unconnected to magic when I suddenly came to this world, but I didn't expect to be able to use magic in this form now. The next thing to check was the newly appeared Book of Truth. Using the power of the stigma, I displayed the Book of Truth with magic. At that moment, a mechanical voice indicated that the book contains the truth and, within the range allowed by magic, can answer any question. I asked the Book of Truth how tall I am, and sure enough, the answer it provided was very accurate, while also costing me a bit of SP, probably because I don't have magic of my own, so it used points instead. Just then, my smartwatch suddenly received a notification, an urgent message from the Cube Academy. A student from world class, Jean Ha Jong, has gone missing. Seeing this message, I immediately understood. This is the start of the second main storyline, the Cube Missing People incident. Just like the name suggests, a total of six students will disappear, and the perpetrator leaves no clues. This storyline is very important because the final target of the perpetrator is Yuyona. But I thought of another possibility. If an accident happens again like in the museum, I might as well catch the perpetrator first. But I quickly dismissed this idea. Rashly interfering with the storyline's development might lead to unexpected events later. So, I decided to just observe for a while. In the following days, I continued training as usual, maintaining vigilance about my surroundings. During this period, a different situation occurred. Someone always came to mock and insult me. Just as Kim Suho was about to rest, someone called him to look ahead. That's when he saw that a student nearby was unabashedly calling me useless, saying I couldn't even lift such a light barbell. Seeing this, Kim Suho was visibly angry, but a man beside him advised him to stay calm and said there was no need to intervene. This man was the class president of the truth class, Yi Yang Han. His advice puzzled Kim Suho. Yi Yang Han explained that these people were Xinjiang hacks, and Kim Ha Jin must have offended him. Moreover, Yi Yang Han believed I was acting. After all, Kim Suho had said that I had disabled a Jin's arm. Such a brave record should not be bullied by Xinjiang hacks people. But under everyone's gaze, I really couldn't lift the barbell. Seeing me unable to stand up, Kim Suho angrily went forward and soon got into an argument with the mocking group. The noise at the training ground finally drew the instructor. The instructor stopped everyone and then gathered everyone together. A few days ago, we had a small test on the analysis of phenomena, and now the results were out and soon posted on the wall. Many people went to check if they had failed. Looking at the test rankings, I was indeed first. After all, as the author, coupled with the effects of observation and browsing, this result was naturally expected. But then there was the sound of a long sword falling to the ground behind me. Rachel was incredulous about the ranking, and I also remembered her setting. Rachel Elizabeth Lewis, a princess from B Country, ranked third in strength among new students at the Cube, just behind Kim Suho and Xinjiang Hack. Since entering the Cube, she had never missed being first in any test, no matter the size. She was determined not to let down the honor of the royal family she came from. But today was the first time Rachel had been defeated in ranking. During class, the teacher gave high praise to my exam. After some thought, Rachel also understood that it would be difficult to shorten the gap between us by midterms. Phenomenon analysis is a complex and difficult subject at the cube, and now Rachel was even more curious about what I usually study. In fact, I have never seriously listened in class. After class ended today, as usual, I went back. Having acquired the Book of Truth, I was ready to make good use of it. So, I created an intelligence agency on Violet Banquet. Although it doesn't have much credibility now, as long as I find an opportunity to get started, coupled with the use of the Book of Truth, it will definitely attract a steady stream of clients. After registering the agency, next I decided to spend the SP points I had recently accumulated. The start of the second main storyline meant that the cube was no longer a safe haven. With my current capabilities, I was not strong enough to face Jin's alone. Thanks to the group led by Xinjiang Hack always bullying me, my SP points were maxed out due to increased attention on me. First, I wanted to enhance my weapon, adding a transformation feature to the Desert Eagle to allow it to morph into a sniper rifle. Although this seemed far-fetched, it was necessary to increase power. This modification was also also expensive, costing 250 SP. After saving the settings, my Desert Eagle quickly transformed into a sniper rifle. I thought, if I took it out, everyone would be surprised. For now, I let it remain in its pistol form. Next, I needed to set my skills. If talents are based on supernatural phenomena powered by magic, then mastery are formed through acquired training. As a marksman, survival and assassination are crucial. I thought of a suitable mastery and wrote a simple description, then used points to create it. The computer soon provided a mastery called parkour, which which cost over 300 SP. Fortunately, the effects of parkour were exactly what I needed. It would increase my agility and flexibility. Before I could test it, my watch rang. This time it was about the disappearance of a word-class student, the second victim. In the novel, until Yuyona was kidnapped, those missing students were hunted by the murderer. Although I knew who the murderer was, I was still a bystander as students disappeared one by one. Even in the world of the novel, I was confused, unsure whether to intervene ahead of time.
time. The next day, many students gathered at the Cube's outdoor training ground. The instructor announced that today's combat training would be different from before. Behind us, in a cave, was an artificial dungeon crafted by the Cube, inhabited by monster dolls mimicking real monsters. Today was a simulation of dungeon raiding. The instructor warned us not to take it lightly, as even the dolls posed a threat to life. Due to the large size of the dungeon, today's training was a joint session between the Truth class and the Cultivation class. Teams temporarily formed between the two classes. The Cube's artificial dungeons were full of traps, some of which were secretly set by Jins. Just in case, I had prepared several bullets with attributes. Just then, a pop-up suddenly appeared on my computer, followed by three notifications of setting changes. I began to look around for the person causing these changes. It turned out that Joe Yuna, teamed with Kim Suo, had become more aggressive, and Jaden from the Cultivation class had enhanced growth potential. Another was with Chai Nian's team, a man named Sven, whom Chai Nian had apparently seen in another club before. Sven's change was a worsening of his mental fortitude.